No doubt about it, John Lennon and the Beatles began the change in both our music and our lifestyles of this generation. Who was he and what were the Beatles? Here's part of the answer. In 1962, playing at a little club called The Cavern, the Beatles begin to gel and become the top band in Liverpool. Their manager, Brian Epstein, predicts, to anyone who will listen, the group will one day be bigger than Elvis. It takes another year before they catch on in America. Most of the music is a team effort from Lennon and McCartney, with Lennon writing the lyrics and McCartney the melody. Their success is phenomenal. I Want to Hold Your Hand becomes the number one song in America, and two months later, the Beatles have the top five singles on the charts. Beatlemania has arrived. Lennon is credited with orchestrating much of the group's attitude and actions. Soon his rebellion became more serious and threatening to the so-called establishment, especially when he said the Beatles were more popular than Jesus Christ. Just last month, Lennon released his first album in five years. Its most popular song, ironically, was called Starting Over. Just like starting over. Starting over. Is being sent to a mental institution in New York tonight for 30 days to try to unravel the twisted chain of events that led to the murder. They kept a vigil all day, making a shrine of the Dakota, where John Lennon and his wife Yoko Ono owned five apartments. Some mourners brought bouquets. Former Beatle Ringo Starr flew from Europe to console Lennon's wife and their five-year-old son. The crowd stood just a few feet from the archway near where Lennon was shot. Witnesses said a gunman followed the Lennons as they got out of a limousine and walked past the Dakota's huge iron gate. This individual, uh, Mr. Chapman, came up behind him and called to him, Mr. Lennon, as he arrived at that doorway. And then in a combat stance, he fired, he emptied the Charter Arms 38 caliber gun that he had with him and uh, shot John Lennon. Lennon died before police could get him to a hospital one mile away. His attacker made no attempt to flee. He was arrested at the Dakota and was moved under heavy guard because of fears for his safety. Police say he is Mark David Chapman, 25, who came to New York a week ago. He stayed at a YMCA and had been asking questions about Lennon. Just six hours before the shooting, Chapman is said to have asked Lennon to autograph the album cover of Double Fantasy, a recording Lennon had completed after five years in seclusion. Chapman entered no plea when he was charged with Lennon's murder late today. He was sent to a hospital for psychiatric examination and will be watched around the clock in case he tries to commit suicide. An assistant district attorney told the court Chapman borrowed a large amount of money and came to New York with the sole intention of killing John Lennon. Stephen Frazier, NBC News, New York. The big question tonight is why was Lennon shot? The suspect, Mark Chapman, had no criminal record, though he had two previous nervous breakdowns. Originally from Atlanta, high school friends remember him as a long-haired hippie who suddenly found religion. Oh, 11th grade, I believe. 12th grade, right in there. He comes in. He's got a crew cut, doesn't wear blue jeans anymore, tennis shoes or anything. Here's a little Bible around with him. Just a phenomenal change. He was a loner, a quiet type person. I could see him going to the extreme maybe of the Jesus movement or maybe to the extreme of, you know, the other, other way. I could see maybe a little bit of instability there, so I could, I could conceive how it could happen, you know. In 1977, Chapman moved to Honolulu. Friends said he was a gifted musician who had always liked Beatles music. His last known job was as security guard. Shortly before he left Honolulu, Chapman bought a revolver from a gun shop. It was bought legally, he even obtained a police permit for it, but so far no one knows why he was to use it to shoot John Lennon. Reactions to his death have been pouring in from around the world, with some of the harshest words coming from the British press. One London newspaper called the slaying typical of the city and nation, where, as they put it, the freedom to carry guns has brought forth monsters. President-elect Ronald Reagan called the shooting a great tragedy, saying it's an example of the type of violence which must be stopped. 
But Reagan also made it plain he does not think handgun control legislation is the answer. Yes, sir. Did you stop that with handgun legislation, Governor? I've never believed that. I believe in the kind of handgun legislation we have in California. Uh, someone Jerry commits a crime and carries a gun please. when he's doing uh, it. Uh, Add five to 15 years to the prison sentence. No funeral service for John Lennon. Instead, his widow, Yoko Ono, says friends will be invited to a prayer vigil later in the week to pray for his soul. Later tonight, in this newscast, we will look at how New Orleans reacted to the death of John Lennon and to the Beatles, who brought Beatlemania to New Orleans and City Park Stadium 16 years ago. Turning to other news, a public hearing took place tonight to try to decide whether to limit oil in New Orleans on the crest of a wave of fanaticism that was sweeping the country. A near riot that night at City Park Stadium Thousands of teenagers inside to see the phenomenon sweeping the country. Among those teenagers, a high school sophomore named Marcia Cavanaugh, who now looks back to that night and to the new audience of today, reacting in shock to Lennon's death. You were crying all night? All night. <laughs> God. Couldn't believe it. It was more shock than anything. A John Lennon fan in New Orleans echoes the sentiments of people worldwide. Record stores in New Orleans and across the country reported brisk sales of Lennon records today. People eager to keep a small part of a man who contributed to big changes in music and lifestyle. I want the last thing that John Lennon did. He was a genius. The Sanger Theater downtown quickly arranged a free memorial to Lennon to be held Wednesday. That's about a week before the show Beatlemania comes to town. Radio stations played Lennon's music. For some, it was a small consolation. Well, I'd love to hear it. Get it on for you just a bit. Well, I'm really sorry to hear about his death. No doubt, the biggest Beatle event to happen in New Orleans happened here, Tad Gormley Stadium in City Park. That was 16 years ago. The Beatles, John, Paul, George, and Ringo were barely out of Liverpool when they took this country by storm. New Orleans was one stop on a tour. It was a September night in 1964, and the scene at City Park was pure chaos. Young girls frantic for a closer look rushed the stage. Police, determined to do their job, gave chase. The Beatles played and sang and joked about the football game on the field. The police eventually cleared the grounds, and the concert ended within a half hour. One of the promoters for the concert was WNOE Radio. Disc jockey Captain Humble recalls how the Beatles put this town on its ear when they arrived here and how his job as escort from the airport proved to be a real challenge. We rushed him out to the Congress Inn out on the Shuffman tour and that's about as far as we got. We got into the lobby of the Congress Inn and there were fans on both sides of the lobby and I was locked in the bathroom with George. With they, they, they said, go and put them in a bathroom somewhere, so, or go put them out of sight. So I was locked in a bathroom with George Harrison at the time. But uh, the guys were fun-loving. They loved it. The Congress Inn now has a new name, and most of the guests don't even know that the Beatles slept here. Rumor has it that they stayed in room 110. But a fortunate few may still have a remembrance from the Congress Inn visit. After the concert, we had... Uh, beetle bed sheets. We got all of the sheets out of their rooms and we cut up very, very small pieces of uh, beetle bed sheets. People wanted anything or everything that they could get from the Beatles. Captain Humble remembers John Lennon as the most outgoing of the force and when they were here. Lennon, in his last interview yesterday, recalled his past and present. The Beatles had the top five numbers one time, right? So I can never get more than I've ever had in that respect. I'm not saying I could never have four, five numbers at once because that's wishing myself bad luck. But let's face the reality. I've had the boyhood thing of being the eldest and getting my own spot on, on the show. I want to be with my best friend, my best friend, my wife. Who could ask for anything more? When he said those words, John Lennon didn't know what future he had would be measured in hours. He died soon afterwards with wife Yoko by his side. Seemingly a more content man than was the Liverpool rocker who wanted to make some changes and did. And that's it.